people here in Sanders, so we want to have them on the air, so just step up to the mic if there's anything you would like to say. Gentlemen, let's talk about uh, pro football. The Super Bowl teams have been decided. Of course, playing uh, a week from this Sunday in New Orleans are going to be San Francisco and Denver. Uh, nobody absolutely shocked. Let's talk about the AFC game first. Uh, I think Bernie Kosar in this game reminded me a little bit of Michael Taylor in the Rose Bowl for Michigan. I mean, he just wasn't having anything on his passes, and he just couldn't get completion to get the job done. And I think that it's almost a miracle that Cleveland scored 21 points yesterday. Well, score back might have been put in, but that's all in the past. I I think that Denver was the better team, not by much. Uh, parity has set in in the NFL, and I think that the NFC this year is far better than the AFC, and San Francisco is obviously far better than anyone else. Uh, Denver just happened to sneak away uh, with the AFC title. Last week's game against Pittsburgh, they really had no business winning. This week, both teams looked poor offensively in the first half. Uh, Denver got a couple breaks in the second half, missed tackles, uh, things such as that. Uh, Cleveland defensive back trying to go for uh, the ball, trying to take it away from him while he's dragging the Cleveland defender down the field and eventually got down to about the 15-yard line. Uh, Denver is the, uh, a team that's gotten into the Super Bowl three out of the last four years, and I look for them to lose again. Seth, what's a miracle to me is that the Cleveland Browns actually lost a game that they deserved to lose. There was nothing. No matter how good they're, they're doing, the bottom line is always bringing home the championship, uh, the Vince Lombardi Trophy, of course. And you could see some changes there if they don't win, and you can't really expect a victory out of them against this tough San Francisco team. We also want to remind you, we're so start thinking about that and stop by Sanders if you're not here already. Gentlemen, uh, NFC yesterday, San Francisco winning easily 30-3 over L.A., who I think is the second best team in football, uh, and not Denver. But at any rate, Joe Montana, 26-30 for uh, over 260 yards yesterday. Almost an effortless performance. It was just another day at the office for Joe Montana. Uh, they're saying about 11. It may be a little scary to back them just because there's so much hype surrounding it, and it seems almost too easy for San Francisco. Uh, Mitch Alvin had a column in the free press this morning talking about how uh, if the AFC game had been played after the NFC game, uh, he was joking around with saying that Denver would offer the AFC championship to Cleveland, say, you go ahead, we don't want to be the sacrificial lambs for the 49ers, but Joe Montana just seems to get better with age. Uh, he's had a couple injuries over the past couple years. Uh, even this year he has, and just bounced back to be fantastic. And when you're completing that kind of percentage, no one's going to beat you. And you also have to give a lot of credit to their offensive line. He wasn't even touched in the last two games. I think we're going to see the line grow yet more. I think it started out around 10 points. Uh, then some guy from Las Vegas went out and bet $100,000 on the 49ers. It jumped to 10 and a half. Now it's at 11 and a half. I think by the time the Super Bowl rolls around, it could be all the way up to 13 and a half. People are just going to keep on realizing what a good team San Francisco is. Uh, they're one of the great teams to come around in a long time. I guess you could go compare them to a team like uh, the Steelers of the late 70s and uh, teams such as that. They're going to really tear apart Denver, and people can see that coming. Terry, I got NBC as Ralph Wiley. Why do you think that is? Well, sports writers are, for, for the print media are used to uh, digging up an entire story. I mean, we're used to filling 15 or 20 inches for a story and uh, covering all angles so that the entire thing is, is filled up. And uh, I think that's what TV wants. Uh, you know, a lot of the TV reporters, they, you know, they get their 15 seconds, they cover one thing, they don't really go in depth. And I think uh, they finally said, hey, let's, let's get as complete a package as we can and uh, let's get some people who are we're used to doing it. Do you think that's added to the broadcasting of pro football? I think it has because, um, you know, people like, you know, Wiley at Sports Illustrated add a lot of insight. However, there's a danger to that, too, because I say these, these guys are in competition, they, and they make a lot of speculative accusations, half of them are right and half of them are wrong. So I think they're trying to compete against each other. So I think perhaps it, it's, it's harmful also in, the, in that area. Speaking of speculative uh, accusations, that's what everybody thought the Jerry Glanville rumors were a couple weeks ago. And matter of fact, Glanville himself said it was shock journalism that Bobby Bethard was saying he was going to be fired, go to Atlanta, and be rehired by Jack Hardy. It turns out it happened. And I'm happy because Jerry Glanville, of course, will still be wearing black but he'll be wearing black for a team that is black as their color, and it'll make a lot more sense than wearing black 
for a team that is powder blue and white is their color. So at least Jerry Glanville will be color coordinated now, and that will make football a lot better for me on Sundays. Just wanted to let everybody know that. Uh, let's move on to college basketball. Seven Missouri last week, and I have to put them in the number two slot. They're a really uh, good team who's played some pretty good teams as well and come out on top and all took one. Illinois is the best team in basketball still, and tonight will be a big test for them now. Gabe? It's getting off the air, and I want to remind you that everybody knows sportscasters have a reputation of not being the greatest dressers in the world, but take a look at us. Look at us. I mean, fashion plates of Bloomfield Hills, fashion plates of Andover here. I mean, we go all out. We know we're going to be in public. We know people are going to be looking at us. We, all three of us have great radio faces. So this works out very well. Gentlemen, I thought we had one heck of a show tonight. Terry Foster from the Detroit News, some comments from the people here at Sanders. I don't know about you, but it worked out the way I wanted it to. Oh, I thought it was a great show. Uh, Terry Foster was, as you said, a great guest, uh, especially getting in at the last minute. We tried to get a line on the show and just didn't come through, but he, uh, he knew what he was talking about. Uh, an interesting half hour on basketball. It was nice to have people come down. Uh, Ron Terrell, A.J. Weiner, a bunch of people in the studio audience really contributed to the show. Seth, how'd you enjoy it, uh, your first remote broadcast as a staffer? Uh, I really liked having Terry on the show. It's, I'd say it's the best guest we've had by far this year. And besides being really knowledgeable in his field, um, he's a really nice guy, too. Sometimes you get the impression that some of these sports writers are a little cocky. This guy was really nice, and he really knew his stuff, too. By far the best guest we've had this season. And uh, you can read Terry's stuff, by the way. I'm sure he'd love for us to plug him uh, in the Sunday Detroit News, which is the news free press or the free press news or the JOA paper, whatever. He writes about the Pistons, and if you ever read about what happens in a Pistons game, that's Terry Foster. Uh, gentlemen, it was great having you here. I enjoyed it, and we're going to be on 7 to 8 every Monday night uh, for the rest of the school year. We feature a celebrity guest each week and uh, the latest sports conversation about Bloomfield and abroad, so keep us tuned. Matt Friedman, along with Gabe Levitt and Seth Alburn from Sanders for WBFH Weekly.